Hi guys, this is Rice Snow. So we have finished the first half of the tutorial and this is another little extra video. Since I started this tutorial, I have received a lot of comments and some of those comments were questions or requests about certain in-game features that they want to implement. One example was zoom in and zoom out function that I introduced in the past video. But not only that, you guys have told me some really cool ideas. So in this video, I will introduce three questions and show how to implement them into the game. Okay, the first question is this one. So how can I troubleshoot by drawing the collision rectangles on screen? Yeah, I think it would be convenient if you could see where the solid area is. This is very easy to check. So basically you just need to draw the solid area with graphics 2D. So in this player class, after drawing the player image, we call draw rect and so draw rectangle. The first is x, x will be uh, yeah, so the player position screen x plus solid area dot x so this will be the x and y is screen y plus solid area dot y and width is solid area dot width and solid area dot height maybe I'm gonna change the color set color red or something okay let's check it yeah so like this so if you want to check where the collision is happening exactly then uh, I think this is a good way to check okay uh, next question is so questions from Savir Savir so there's something that caught my attention the character movement so when it when it stops walking, it shows the latest sprite, and instead of going back to the first sprite, a standstill position. So how could you make it so when the play when the character stops walking, it displays a specific sprite of the animation? This is actually a really good question and I, an idea. Yeah. So right now. Depending on when you release the key, the player character stops with the walking sprite. And uh, this is also very easy to fix. So after this key pressed if statement, we add else and uh, change the sprite to 1, sprite num equal 1. So when you are not pressing any keys, the sprite is automatically set to 1, which is a standstill position. But this is still not enough. I'll show you how it looks like right now. So, yeah. So whenever you release the key, the player sprite returns to 1 at once. But if you release the key right after the character switched to the sprite 2, then uh, he quickly goes back to 1. And uh, I think it looks a bit unnatural. So we're gonna create, so basically we're gonna create uh, another counter and adjust the timing. Stand counter or whatever name you want. And when we enter this else, we increase this counter. And then counter, counter. So when this hits the certain number, like uh, 20, then we change this to one and also reset the counter. 
So this way, there is always 20 frames time buffer. So let's check this. Can you see? So I think this looks more natural. Anyway, so this way you can, you know, always set the player character back to the standstill position whenever you release the key. Yeah, I think this is a good idea. So thanks for the suggestion. Okay, and the next question is this one. So this is a bit more complicated. So concept for grid tiled based movement. I assume this means how much player character moves is decided by tile length. So if you hit W key, the character goes up by one tile. If you hit D key, the character goes down by one tile. And this mechanic was pretty common in classic retro games such as Dragon Quest or Final Fantasy or many other games. To implement this tile-based movement, first we will edit the player's solid area. So we have set these specific collision area, but this time we change this to a tile size minus one pixel. So basically everything is solid, but we create one pixel space around it. So let me change this x1 and y1 and uh, width is so uh, 46 and 46 and uh, we don't need to change the speed as long as you want to keep the same speed then we create a boolean uh, called uh, moving equal false and also create integer. I'm gonna name this pixel counter equal zero. Then inside of this update, first we check if moving equal false or one, one not. Because if player starts moving, he doesn't stop until he moves a uh, tile length. So we cannot change the direction while he is moving. So we only accept this key input when player is not moving. So we select this key pressed if statement down to here, pick up object, and move inside of this if statement. Also, yeah, this one stand counter we just added. So this is also inside of this moving files. Wait, something is wrong. Oh, okay. Placement is not here. Yeah. All right. And then we create uh, another if. And uh, this time, if moving is true, and then we just uh, move the rest inside of this moving true. And uh, so every time we get in this moving true, we increase this pixel counter uh, by player speed. So in this case, four pixels at a time. And since we cannot stop moving until the character moves one tile, and which is 48 pixels. So if pixel counter equal 48, then moving equal false and a pixel counter equal zero like this okay let's check oops he doesn't move uh, okay uh, 
going to oh yeah yeah so when you press the key we need to uh, set this moving through so this should work now okay hmm Yeah, so as you can see, now he's moving tile base or grid base. Yeah, uh, that's it for now. Maybe I will make another this kind of video if I receive more questions in the future. Thanks for watching and until next time.